Hello and welcome to episode three of Bobble Pod. We're very excited to be here today. We're going to be talking about top digital trends for 2021. We are at the start of a brand new year um, and we're really looking forward to what 2021 brings and put behind all the chaos that was 2020. Um, the digital landscape um, changed quite a lot. So before we begin, we're going to introduce everyone. So I'm one of the co-hosts, Manny Singh, CEO of Bobble Digital. And today I'm going to be talking about five specific trends today, which is AI and personalized ads and website experiences, podcasts and vodcasts, short five second videos, strategy and data analytics, and finally automation, working smarter, shorter, but not longer. I'm Claire Daniels, CEO of Trio Media, and today I'm going to be talking about AI as well, um, chatbots and personalization specifically, also the continuing rise of short form videos um, across social media like TikTok and Reels, um, along with brand and social activism, so more of a rise of the conscious consumer, and finally community-led content. Hi guys, I'm Anushna Tsakanyan, a video marketing expert and CEO and co-founder of Burnwee. And today I'm going to talk about um, trends like global videos, 360 video experience, infomerial and vertical videos, customized and personalized video content, and at the end, interactive and silent videos. I'm hoping to have really informative and productive chat today. Fantastic. So yeah, so everyone listening... Big trend, big topic today, digital trends for 2021. This is the podcast you really want to kick the start of the year off with. So we're going to kick it off with the first trend um, that we want to discuss because we've got a lot that we want to get through, which is, I think, AI, um, personalized ads and website experiences, and leaning that into, obviously, what Claire wants to discuss, which is around AI, around chatbots and um, automated personalization. The reason I mention AI is um, with AI, the impact that COVID and the pandemic has had on online consumer shopping experiences, it's more important for businesses, especially in the e-commerce, we're expecting the high straight retail to kind of die off. Just look at what's happened with Arcadia over the last month and Debenhams, Topshop and all the brands associated with that. There's a number of other high street retailers struggling right now because they failed to adapt online. And as you adopt line your online experiences, online shopping patterns um, to consumers who will now buy online, look at Amazon. And the reason Amazon is so successful is because they know so much about you, they tailor your experience to you, not give you a blanket approach for everyone. So that's where AI and platforms and third party, you know, plugins will be key to help engage, you know, consumers and help brands through what will be a very specific online shopping pattern behavior through 2021. So I just want to put it out to obviously the rest of my co-hosts in terms of what do they think will, you know, how AI will adapt some of the clients that they're working with. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it comes to that personalization piece, doesn't it? And AI has been around for a while and I think for a lot of people listening they may just think it's one of those other buzzwords but actually how does it come down to real life application and how does it work for people and it is that element of really taking data and understanding how people are using it and having automated systems in place to maximize maximize that user journey so that's why uh, you know i believe it ties into that whole chatbots piece as we're definitely seeing a rise of this you know live chat has been around for a while but actually why does it need to be live when we can have that type of experience and your customer can actually be speaking with a robot system but is that is perfectly set up to guide them through the conversation that you want to have with them and generate a lead for you at the end. So whether you're B2B or B2C, because obviously the retail example, very much B2C driven, but there's also great benefits from B2B perspective in terms of using online artificial intelligence to generate new inquiries and leads. I think 2021 is going to be a a difficult year for retailers and for businesses in terms of how to, you know, connect with their customers and clients and suppliers. 
in different ways. And I don't think we, I personally don't think we're going to see some kind of normalization until 2022. So this is where companies need to adapt online more now than ever before. So you've got to consider that when I go shopping and I like to go to supermarkets and I like to do my personal shopping, I haven't done that for eight, nine months now. So since March 2020, getting lost in the years now, aren't we? <laughs> um, it's all blending into one. don't even know what day of the week it is right now. Um, so I think with us having to stay at home, having to rely and do most of our shopping online the last time I had that personal experience and I love having that personal experience of going into a you know into a store a retail supermarket and being able to buy and have it delivered um it's also a way for me to escape and get out of the house and do some kind of errand they're gonna lose that consumers um in 2021 a lot they've already lost it so that's where you need to start creating that experience online and one of those elements is going to be chatbots allowing people to talk to someone real or make it look like you're talking to somebody real yeah and something else I noted down um, as a trend to discuss um, that I've just remembered about is you know it's closely linked to AI but is AR and VR so augmented reality virtual reality so something that we've been looking at more because we design a lot of websites for our clients is actually a virtual try-on experience so if you can't go to the shops but you still want that experience of seeing what a pair of glasses looks like or some jewelry or an item of clothing actually developing that um, because the world, like you say, the world of retail is going to change forever and that experience needs to be seamless in what once was a physical experience into online. And I think so many of the trends that we've actually identified kind of merge into one because from that AR, VR piece, I'm interested to hear Anush's opinion with regards to shoppable videos and how that all links together as well. So shoppable videos and posts actually are one of the trends I wanted to talk about because um, it went everything online, especially during this year that uh, no one could go out of go out and they need to shop actually online. But there there is some problems with trusting because people may see the product online, but they may not trust the actual product. That's why uh, people started to create a lot of videos because videos are giving the possibility to see the product in action what is it about actually from different angles and that makes people to trust and to purchase the product and that's how actually you see that even Instagram started to have different part in their social media channel for shops so people can directly shop in social media and don't even go to the website and that makes the purchase process even shorter so it's not it's not just two clicks it's just one click you are clicking and you're buying the product and um, shoppable posts you have seen maybe between the stories when you are watching your stories and between them you see the sponsored video these videos need to be very interactive to be honest so people can just be interested in a product just swipe up and buy immediately from there and this is 2020s uh, one of the most trends because um, everyone is going all the e-commerce are going to be in a integrated to social media i have a question on that for you nash is with all these shoppable videos i'm assuming you know retailers that are adapting online will have to create multiple video content and create it and personalize it to different customer segments that they've identified as part of who they know their customer base are <sighs> To be honest, videos is a big trend in 2020, but it's not about just having video, but you need to pick up the right videos also uh, to understand which, which video is working for your case. You need to also understand what exactly you need. So to answer to your questions, Manny, uh, I think that um, you need to start using a lot of videos, but your video also need to have very good content and you need to post regularly because uh, when you're posting something very engaging and interesting people started to connect with you and when you don't post it regularly you're 
losing the connection with your customers. And the next time you post, it's not working. This is actually working really great, especially with the new trends like Reels and TikToks. That's why I wanted to ask Claire to talk about a bit about this topic because I know that you are using so much and you can tell us some ticks and tips about this. Absolutely. Can I come back to that? Because I think you made a really interesting point, Anush. I wrote down as you were talking about trust and that trust element and credibility at the moment. If if everyone's shopping online and you're not having a personal or physical experience, how you differentiate between certain retailers or, or companies of any type. And, you know, one of the areas that I'd looked at as a trend was community-led content. And I think that ties really into the video piece around actually your audience creating that content for you. And we're seeing a lot more of this in terms of because we did go through a period where everyone was at home and even professional video production wasn't going ahead. And so brands were relying on content creation of their people just sat at home using their mobile phones or their community and their customers and so I think that's something that we'll continue to see because it helps build that credibility and trust Um, but interestingly I did a LinkedIn poll around the trends I was looking at and nobody said they were investing in that 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 got no votes so actually at the moment businesses and brands aren't seeing the value of community-led content even though it plays such a vital part in building that that online trust that's so important these days. Just thought I'd see what people thought about that. that I think that's interesting, considering how 2020 has gone and the focus of 2021. And if you look at the Christmas ads, obviously we're launching this in January when this goes live, but we are currently in the lead up to December. It's the December the 16th here right now. So there is a lot of change in terms of what we've seen. The big retails focus their message on around Christmas, which is family, community. Um, you just have to look at Tesco's ad of how they looked at how people got integrated and like, don't worry, there is no naughty list this year, whether you got involved in, you know, Sir Tom Moore's, you know, you know, walk and all this kind of content that was generated by different brands. I think, yes, community-led content will be the way forward so i'm actually very very surprised it's not at the top of especially smaller and medium-sized businesses um you know focus for 2021 yeah and something we're doing as a business is um really trying to hone in on what makes us different and actually identifying that the main part of what makes us different is our people and our customer service and we're reaching out to our clients by sending them personalised um, packages, but that is encouraging them to create content from it you, because that's where we will get growth. You know, everyone knows that if you get a referral, a referral is far more likely to convert than a cold lead. And if your audience is creating content for you and supporting your brand, then naturally you should be more likely to get leads from their network as well. So I definitely think that's something that potentially people aren't seeing the value of just yet, but that will be really, really key for 2021 and beyond. Um, just picking up then on the the short form videos and TikTok and Reels. So absolutely, and in, in, in the poll, 33% of people said that they are going to be looking at focusing more on this in 2021. So I think the day of thinking TikTok might blow over is gone, you know, and it's time that brands and companies realise it's here to stay. You know, I, I don't think many people realise how long it's been around in one form or another. You know, it was musically to start with, and I think that was kind of 2015, 2016, that it was first on the scene and then went away, came back as TikTok. But every single month this year, bar, I think, April, Zoom was the most popular downloaded app. And November, WhatsApp was because um, the new phones came out and everyone had to read download whatsapp but every other month the most popular app that was downloaded was tiktok so for people to think their audience isn't on there they're mistaken and even if they're not there now they will be you know everything's got to start somewhere and we rely on the younger generation to adopt it and then it rolls out so that's what happened 
with Instagram, with Snapchat, with YouTube, with all the other social media channels. I mean, look how much Facebook has now matured, that it started as a young person thing. It was a university tool to keep in touch with your uni friends. And now it's all our mums and dads who are using it. You know, the most popular user is a kind of 50 to 60 year old woman. (laughs) Well, we see it as the platform where we can target those with the actual disposable income to actually spend and buy the products we're pushing for our clients. (laughs) So it kind of shows that where Facebook has got because, and and I'm not surprised with how long it's been around Facebook. It's, you know, um, we look back at all the way to MySpace and who remembers the days of MySpace in terms of what that could have been. And Facebook has survived because not only has it bought out the likes of whatsapp and instagram um as part of its growth (laughs) and stayed current it has adapted with the times i mean i look at linkedin's recent platform redesign and i feel it's very very facebooky yeah i don't know if that's a word yeah yeah you go on linkedin you're like oops i'm on facebook oh no i'm not (laughs) i was like that i had to double check on my phone am i on facebook or linkedin i had to double check because Mm. i have some business friends that are personal friends on facebook (laughs) and um, i'm thinking hang on am i sharing this on facebook or linkedin and i think something you know it's a bit on a tangent in terms of what we're discussing i think linkedin needs to probably rethink that they there are copying a personal platform when they're a professional platform i love the idea of linkedin stories but again on my mobile all the client stat pages that we manage come up first so i actually for don't even see any personal stories yeah but you know the point i'd make on that to bring it round to the trend of tiktok is even if you're using linkedin like linkedin is where your main audience is for example you can still create content on tiktok and repurpose it onto LinkedIn. And that's something that we do a lot. You know, we're a B2B organization. We're a marketing agency. So most of our clients are other businesses. Is that audience on TikTok just yet? No. However, we are creating TikTok content and sharing it onto LinkedIn so that our connections on LinkedIn can see what we're doing on TikTok. And we actually get, as a business, so many comments because people are seeing the content that we're sharing. Um, you know, We share it on our other channels and we're cross-pollinating that short format video to maximise its reach. So it's not just about creating it within the platform. Although we did have a TikTok that's, I can't call it viral because apparently it's got to have 5 million views to be viral, but we were pretty pleased that it's on over 200,000 views. Um, So you can create content and really get that reach and get your name out there. Um, But then, yeah, like I say, cross-pollinate it onto the platforms that you currently feel most comfortable with, where you know your audience is, but don't ignore that these channels are there and they are rising. And, you know, if you don't get on top of it now, you're just going to end up scrambling to catch up in a year, a couple of years' time when you've ignored it and you go, oh, everyone's doing it now. And, you know, the platform potentially becomes saturated because at the moment there's a great opportunity for advertisers on TikTok because it is there as an advertising platform. People are using it, but it's kind of untapped potential at the moment, whereas it will become very saturated um you know over the next year i'm keen to hear from you and nush in terms of you know you're you're the video expert and you're creating video content day in day out how you've seen the likes of tiktok and reels impact more standard video content and how you see the video market adopting into 2021 it's so interesting that a year ago this time, no one were th- thought that uh, like businesses were uh, could use like t- TikTok in their everyday need and find clients, especially when they are dar- targeting like youth people. So, but nowadays everyone started to use it. And one thing that I I think that mostly works why people started to use TikTok is. Uh, is that TikTok and Reels uh, on Instagram is a type of content which is connecting interactive and informative content together and and it is making the process more engaging. So people can see like funny things uh, and at the same time be interested to know more about the brand. That's why it's working better because you can just sit down one hour and watch all these videos and t- without any stop. And every time that you are watching these videos, you are making more interest to the product and to the people who are actually creating the videos. Um, so to be honest, um, 
there are different like high quality videos and there are videos that you can create with your smartphone. And 2020 is the year when you don't need to start with your video marketing only with your high quality productions. Of course, you need that too, but uh, for your everyday use and for for this, for just to start, you can shoot everything with your smartphone, and this could this could be even enough to engage people. And that's why actually these TikTok and Reels are becoming more popular because people also understand that they can create video content without a big budget, and it could work, but even sometimes even better. Um, yeah, and when we're talking about TikTok and real style videos, we need to highlight that one of the biggest trends for 2021 is going also to be vertical videos because all these video styles are shooted vertical. And why it's so important to shoot vertical because everyone is watching these videos with their smartphones, 90% uh, maybe. And that means that it is more comfortable for them to watch this in a vertical format. That's why when you consider to having videos, you need to always consider having it in vertical format too. Um, funny thing that last time we shot a video for one of our biggest companies, uh, we did it all vertical. Even for the post uh, to put in uh, Facebook, we did it in vertical format. Um, you know that it's working really good because you can just scroll the feed. It is in a vertical format, but when you are clicking, you see the wall content. But in the feed, it appears just like four, three uh, um, part of it. Uh, and you can create like a, the most important part in this format. And when they click, they can see the rest of the part of the video. And you can do different kind of interesting like gifts to put there so people can click and find out that there is an interesting gift that they can buy with the product and get with the products. So this is also comes with another trend that I know that money is going to talk that short five and 10 second videos, uh, how this could also affect to ads, uh, like when you're putting social media ads, uh, Facebook ads, or just to put in a Google I, I do see some issues with that. And the reason I say that is second largest search platform, the largest video consumption platform is YouTube. And that's not vertical. Yeah. Well, right. have you seen that they are adapting yeah. on mobile? Yes. So now exactly. they have adapted. You can have vertical and you can have square on mobile. So they are now changing. I've noticed that recently that they're recognised and they've got to get... But the element I mean is more from a ad point of view. So obviously as a you know media agency placing ads, not an issue when it comes to Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. You can have ads within stories, you can have ads within phones, and it's perfect. But the one element I see in the short term, and, and I assume YouTube will catch up for, is as more and more vertical content is created via video over the next 2021 year, I think that one platform that will struggle with that and where especially agencies and clients will have to struggle and it might impact budgets is having to create a different format for YouTube, which is more landscape and turning your phone, you know, landscape to actually view the video content and then the ads appear in landscape view yeah. in terms of when you're watching it. But I, I have seen the recent updates from YouTube in terms of allowing it to expand to screen mode but I just don't think the ads are there yeah. for that to adapt for that because of you know the YouTube ads appear in in stream whilst you're viewing and they come up within five seconds and skippable but the raw landscape so I wonder what impact that's going to have on the consumers you know viewability of that video and how they engage with it yeah and I think you raise an interesting point in terms of it's all well and good as talking about where the technology is going and the future of the trends but have budgets you know been allowed for this in terms of the changes that the businesses are going to have to make to adapt to those technologies because you know I know for example and, and Anush, maybe you can tell us more about this and um, you mentioned about 360 degree video and Facebook has adopted the th 360 degree video now but you know that could be a way of counteracting it that actually it doesn't matter what way you view the video because there's always something different to see but that includes a whole different approach to filming, to editing and everything like that, that potentially the companies aren't yet prepared for. 
before talking about 360 de uh, degree videos, because it's a actually a really interesting theme and I want to mention it a lot and talk about it because it's already like available for more than three years, but at the same time, no one a lot using 360 videos. Before that, as money mentioned that there are some problems with uh, vertical videos to use on YouTube, I would say that one of the trends for 2021 is customization for your videos for different social media channels. Why is that? Because of course you can't use one type of and size of video everywhere because each social media channel has their own requirements and you need to follow them to have more attractions. Uh, so I would suggest actually when you are going to shoot a video, better to organize it beforehand and create at least three versions of your video, one vertical, one wide and one square one. Because each of them you can use them separately for different social media channels and find out which one is working better for that particular case. And this is going to help you a lot because when you have beforehand all this organized, you already can use them, but not like sit down and think, okay, now I want to have a video for Facebook. What should I do? And But you have already planned video, you have already planned marketing uh, activities, and you know which kind of video you can use for what for which platform uh, concerning the 300 degree videos actually I think that is going to be more trendy when 5G will be available all over the world because it's now available for some countries but there are a lot of countries which do not have 5G but 360 videos uh, for having it and for having it as an everyday plan as like stories, you need to have a good internet for that. Um, we have tried actually several times to use 360 videos for our customers, especially it's working great when you are organizing some games and you can shoot the 360 videos and then add some animations there and people should find some, I don't know, should, should check all 360 uh, parts angles of it and find out some interesting hidden objects or something and this is ma making the process very interactive um, so I would really suggest people to start using it in 2021 because not all of their competitors using for this moment and if they start using it they will for sure stand out among the competitors and uh, that would make also their audience to be interested to uh, watch their videos um, as, um, all the time or just enter to their website to see which kind of new uh, video they have. So when we are talking about personalization of videos, we need to also consider that all the videos need to be for people in different occasions. So basically there, there is another trend in 2021. It's called silent videos. And when I'm saying silent videos, it doesn't mean that video don't need to have like music or voiceover. Uh, that's the, for the cases when people usually don't want to hear your video. They want to just look at it or they don't have a possibility to turn on music for that. And you need to consider that sometimes there are situations like this. And when you are creating video, uh, you need to make like keywords or tags in it. So people, when they are watching without sound, they could understand actually what's in the video. This is very important to consider because not all the time there is a possibility to watch your video with the sound. Yeah, I think I, I noticed that when I'm on the phone is, you know, there's no sound, but I'm watching the video. And I think a key element of that is make sure your video has subtitles. I, I can literally find myself watching Instagram stories, like watching someone talk. I never have sound on my phone. And I'm like just flicking through, not listening, don't know what they're saying, but I'm still <laughs> watching them. Um, obviously, Instagram stories is different because that is someone personally creating that content. But absolutely, even personal creators are spending more time subtitling their content because they know that people aren't listening out loud. So I definitely agree. And, and that's something that people could potentially adopt quite easily if you're already creating video content to think about how you can subtitle it or include text within the video um, to reach a wider audience because it's very rare that people, as they're scrolling through and they're seeing your video, actually have the sound on. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going to bring um, a trend back. Uh, well, not back, but move it forward because a few things were mentioned then. Um, one was, you know, budgets for 2021. Um, and I think a lot of it comes down to strategy in terms of how you're going to strategize your video. So one of the trend, trends I want to talk about 2021 that's going to be more important now than ever is strategy and data analytics. So I'm kind of taking the topic away from video. So apologies anyone who's listening. And if they're really interested, <laughs> but we will come back to that shortly. Um, so yes, strategy and data analytics. I put a, uh, a question out um, as a poll on LinkedIn and it was, where are you focusing your marketing budget in 2021? I gave four options. Um, I probably should have given more, but it was the four for most important. Competitor research, further training, e.g. webinars, social media and content, or other, and I asked them to describe what that was. 0% said competitor research, which I was completely shocked about, that nobody invested their budget into competitor research, which, considering that, you know, big businesses, small businesses, medium-sized businesses have all been impacted you're trying to get a competitor advantage. It's a recession style, you know, economy. The more you invest into your marketing, the larger your market share will be, the better you will come out of it in the long run. So if you're not worried about what your competitors are doing, then you might miss a trick or miss an opportunity and get left behind. So I was surprised by that. But the biggest response came, 67% said they were going to invest in social media and content. So I think a lot of strategy is going to come through that. And the only way they need to know what to do is, I think, data analytics. And data analytics covers a whole breadth of elements we can discuss. But I think more of it is online data analytics and understanding who your customers are and what that segment brings. And it kind of overlaps with another trend, which is, you know, personalization and, you know, web experiences that consumers have on websites is the more you know about your customers through data analytics, the more you can start tailoring content towards them um it's no point creating a blanket content approach for all your customers especially depending on the sector you're in whether it's b2b or b2c if you have b2c you're going to have customers of different ages gender different personalities characteristics different interests um, and that's just looking at let's say one sector in particular let's say fa fashion or whether that's you know furniture or retail you need to really start integrating. And that's where I think the biggest problem is going to come on. Without strategy and understanding how to plan that content and segment that data, will businesses know? A lot of questions I get asked, and the reason I mention this is, you know, how should we move forward as a business when we're prospecting? We have a lot of clients coming up saying we're looking to grow into 2021. We're seeing some success, but we don't know where it's coming from. And all that's going to come from understanding your data. Platforms like Google Analytics, understanding the in-platform data from Google Ads, YouTube, your social engagements, how many video views you've had, what kind of video content was being consumed more, through, all the way through to, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, um, data, including, you know, platforms like Search Console. What are the, you know, search terms that I customer is looking for to find you during this period? We saw a big rise in the terms COVID-19 around 20 20 in terms of being added on as a search term towards the end so understand your data analytics understand what search terms are driving people to your traffic understand who is visiting your website create two three four as many segments as you can i'm going to give one example of how we've done that with a client a client's called comfy homes um home furniture client um based in west yorkshire wakefield we're working with a partner platform pure clarity uh, which allows personalizations and we've segmented those customers by those that have viewed particular products, those that are new to the website, those that are existing customers, those that have only purchased once, those that we class as VIP customers, so purchase frequently throughout the year and visit the site often. And every time a customer goes to that site, they have a completely different experience compared to that. And this is what I'm trying to say is a new customer sees a completely different homepage image gallery at the same time when an existing customer would go back. And we know that and we know what kind of message and what information to, to view is because we're taking that data analytics to understand, right, what offers work well with new customers to keep them on site for longer and keep them as retained customers? What do our existing customers, what were they doing the last time they're on the site? What products did they look at but they didn't buy? or what categories were they looking at on the site that they didn't buy, that we can then recommend them to get them straight into 
the purchase funnel on site and create that personalized experience. Even though when the message they go back to site, it says, welcome back to Comfrey Homes. Good to see you again. Yeah. Here's some products that we recommend based on what you were looking at last time. And it's similar to, and I call it the Amazon approach. And I can't stress Amazon more than enough because Amazon have grown and the reason they do so well and the reason that they are the biggest online retailer in the world and will continue to be is because they know what you're interested in, what you're searching for. So the next time you're on Amazon, and it's why I get parcels every other day to my house and I'm, I'm happy to admit that, um, is because they tailor my experience to me based on what they know that I'm interested in buying and eventually they get me. Yeah. And I think for me, the standout thing that you mentioned there when you segued into that was you said, we've spoken about budget. And for anyone who doesn't know how important data analytics is, it all comes back to budget in terms of knowing where to invest your money on what's working. And I think, I mean, I've definitely seen with our clients more, the kind of final quarter of the year, definitely more and more people saying, can I get more insights into what my audience are doing, what people are doing? Because if you're having to look at making budget cuts, you need to know what is working and what not and where to invest your budget because now is more important than ever to be able to really get under the skin of that and go, if we're investing in something, it needs to work. You know, just before we started the podcast, we were looking at the figures of our views you know, on both the vodcast and the podcast, because we would, if no one was watching the videos, but everyone was listening to the podcast, we could know, we will no longer invest in the video side, because that area isn't working, and that is why it's so important, because we could channel budget into something else, obviously that's not the case, because all we do is talk about video, we know how important it is, <laughs> um, and, and we're seeing that for us too, you know, video is the best channel for this, um, you know, this episode that we're doing, but um, the podcast that we're doing, sorry, but absolutely understanding the analytics, so you know where to spend your money and what's working and what's not. Um, when I did that poll, yeah. and we can probably get through a couple of trends that I wanted to discuss in, in 2021, is when it came back as other, which was 17%, it was, you know, improving, you know, um, you know, working faster, quicker automation. Mm -hmm. It was topics around that, such as one response was, um, you know, improving into improving productivity. Yeah. So one trend that I see happening over 2021 is automation so working smarter and shorter and not longer and that will happen across digital that will happen in terms of personal businesses in terms of how they get their employees to work and that's investing in you know platforms like trello your yeah. you know monday.com your um slacks etc but from an automation from a digital marketing perspective i think from our from our point of view it's budgets are tight we need to introduce more automation and working smarter and shorter to give more value to clients, but not at high agency fees. Yeah. And I think when you can onboard more clients in a way where you're working harder and smarter in a shorter space of time, and then it's more affordable for businesses and still get the same output, that's an element from, our, I think, from our personal point of view, something we're trying to invest in, which is why we invest in pure clarity, which is why we're investing in AR. It has nothing to do with us, our abilities to be able to do SEO, PPC, and social media. So you might think, well, why are we investing into AI and personalization? Because the data from that allows us to work smarter, harder, and better to target the audience more effectively. So it kind of gets rid of the guesswork, yeah. as I call it. Um, another thing you kind of mentioned there was obviously um, another trend I want to kind of pick up was obviously podcast and vodcast we are doing podcast and vodcast right now this yeah. is a recorded vodcast um i love the vodcast because i love being on camera i don't know about anybody <laughs> else um, and the podcast is something that's really risen because we've had more time to be at home and listen i'm actually going to ask everyone right now what is be obviously with the exception of bubble pod being our favorite podcast and i hope it is <laughs> even though we're all co-hosts is what is your number one podcast right now and why that you like to listen to can I shamelessly plug another one that I do? Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> so I also run an, another podcast <laughs> um, called the North Star Podcast, which is more, it's less kind of marketing focused, but more generally like um, business and career focused. Um, it's 
the terminology of the North Star is about being a guiding light, finding your purpose. So that's something that, that we're recording. But generally, I like to flick in between. I'm subscribed to about 20 and I'll just look at what's on, what takes my fancy that day. Um, I quite like the Boss Babe <laughs> um, podcast, but um, you know they're speaking to a lot of inspiring women um, and stories in business. So I really enjoyed that. And um, there's one that I listen to as well called Zero to Seven Figures, and it's all about that millionaire mindset as well. So, but I do I do flick between quite a few, but I only listen to business. It's either like business or marketing related podcasts. Um, that's that's my preference of the type of thing I like to consume. What about you, Inosh? Yeah, it's so interesting, but you, you will not maybe be surprised. I'm usually hearing podcasts connected to videos. So one of them <laughs> I want to pick up is called The Business of Video, and it's by Owen and Nick. They are usually discussing everything uh, about videos. And even though I... I am all the time in these videos. You need to be all the time on top and see maybe there are some new ideas that you need to pick up uh, because everyone usually on this and something new and trendy um, need to be always um, considered. What about you, Manny? Um, There's actually one podcast that I listen to religiously more than, and I I think I might even be a stalker right now. Um, It's Kate Leeson's, I shouldn't say this, but... I am so addicted to her content and her podcasts. The one that I was watching, just um, listening to actually, the other day was um, Active Procrastination. Uh, and realize I'm a bit of a procrastinator myself. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I actually <laughs> love that because it's more, even though some of it is digital, it's more in terms of obviously as a you know business owner, as you know a leader, someone who's responsible for a team, it's understanding, you know, the mental side of you know consumers the insights and what we can do and the insights I get from that I find I am implementing more day in day out so I actually find that as probably that's probably my number one podcast right now do you know what I love that because that's Mm -hmm. something I talk about and and I say to my team and encourage people to listen to podcasts is whenever I listen to a podcast I'm inspired at the end and I'm making notes and it's given me an idea and it's not necessarily something that they have exactly said but it's something that they've sparked an idea about within me. And, you know, I think that's what we hope to achieve with this as well is anyone listening to this episode particularly is going to have loads of top tips and trends that they can look into for next year. Uh, well, for 2021, when, when the episode goes out, um, but is for them to take away and go, what of that could I take and action into my business? And, you know, if there's one thing that I could start doing, what would it be? Because we've covered so many things here in terms of, I think it's quite apparent anyone that's listened to every episode will know we've heavily focused on video every time and it's unintentional, but we're talking about marketing, we're talking about the future and we end up talking about video because it's the way things are going. So absolutely, that is going to continue to be a top trend, but there are so many other areas that people can get into, whether it's try doing a podcast or listening to you know it doesn't mean you have to create a podcast but podcasts are around stay so start listening to them you know and looking at other areas like your data analytics there's so many different things um that people can be inspired by and look into implementing as part of their strategy next year yeah i think when you realize that your customers would be or your ideal consumers might be listening to podcasts podcasts across apple and Spotify, especially on the free platforms, offer an opportunity for advertisements. Yeah, just a small tip for those who want to start with podcasts, vodcasting, or even just starting with vlogging. Uh, consider that your content is the most important part so, because people listening you, because they want to learn from you. So as soon as your content is very educational and informative, they will continue following you. So that's the most important part for this moment. Even though it's important to have like really good quality video or a good microphone as we have, but at the same time, you need to consider mostly the content than all the other equipments. Absolutely. And, you know, I think that's a good time. I think there's only one trend we haven't covered that I can cover really quickly in terms of that piece around the content. 
Um, I mentioned earlier around brand activism and conscious consumers, and I think that all links into having a message that resonates with your audience. So whether you're using that message on video, on a podcast, on social media, on TikTok, on any of the areas that we've covered, this is something that is becoming more and more important, is consumers are savvier than ever, they're more conscious, they want to see the companies that they're investing in through making purchases being more conscious about causes that matter to them. So whether that be, um, you know, climate change, plastic pollution, any of these things, um, it's really, really important for brands to make sure they're communicating to their audience how they are helping, um, you know, towards an important cause. And I think that's, that's something that if a brand is looking at getting started in terms of looking at these trends, what do I do? Well, think about what your message is. What do you stand for as a business? Because if you lead with that type of messaging, you're always going to resonate with someone if you if you take a stand on something. And then you can look at which channels you use to promote that. I, I, I totally agree with that. I think the tip, the, the element I can give away is that, you know, your customers don't just buy your products and services, they buy into your brand. Yeah. And a great example of something that just came out and it would be completed by the time we launch this is Burger King giving up their Instagram page to allow, you know, you know, we're not just going to promote us on Instagram. We're actually going to promote local businesses in key areas around the world and give them a platform to get views. Um, and, you know, you know, you mentioned, you know, Green and um, I'm not plugging ourselves here, but actually thanks to Claire and Tria and the work she's done with Rainforest um, Trust UK, you know, we're now going to help protect 788 acres and we did a video around that. We created content about that because we want to shout and share that, you know, we are a conscious a green agency and we want to talk about, you know, the impact that's going to have and that's what consumers want to see. So we do it, we practice what we preach. Um, so if we are giving you tips and trends, and um, we do practice what we preach, but yeah, consumers and customers. And when you look at the seasonal advertising and what's going to happen moving forward in terms of how brands push is, you know, you've got to think about, you know, how you resonate personally with that potential customer. And it's more than just the product and the USBs of your product and your brand. It's about how does your brand stand out in terms of how you appeal to them on a personal level. So with all that that we've discussed, there's a lot of tips, a lot of trends that we've discussed today. Um, as you're watching the video on YouTube, you'll see these uh, pop up as animations. Um, uh, we have hope we provide a lot of content. 2021 is going to be an interesting year. Uh, when I look at back at the 2020 trends, a lot of them really expanded a lot quicker than what we expected. So it'll be interesting to see how 2021 um, develops over the year. Moving forward, we're going to start introducing guest co-hosts. So if you uh, listening and you want to be interested and talk about a particular topic do reach out to us uh, visit our website bobblepod.co.uk where you can look at historical podcasts and where you can look at future events coming up um, i'd like to thank all our hosts claire and anush um, for you know joining us um, as we continue we have a lot of content planned for 2021 as part of bubble pod and we hope you enjoy what you're listening to and we look forward to an exciting year ahead Thanks, guys. Thanks for listening. Thanks. Thanks.